Yes, so this is um, a plan for 1,200 uh, locomotives, which will be delivered over a period of 11 years, followed by a maintenance period of 35 years. So um, we as Siemens are, of course, delighted that we have been uh, able to win this order. And this really goes in the direction of the Indian Railways to start moving towards or to move uh, towards greater efficiency in the freight system uh, in the country while also moving towards their plan of complete electrification. Um, this of course is also a step in the direction of ensuring that the entire transportation system in the country is both uh, carbon friendly and much more sustainable in addition to being extremely efficient. Right. 1,200 locomotives in total, so I understand that you will be supplying five locomotives in the first year, 35 in the second, with 80 locomotives per annum in the third and the fourth year, if you could just clarify the same. So yes, there is a roadmap for the number of locomotives that have to be supplied every year, and that is, part, that is a part of the contract, and Siemens has bid on that basis. and. Um, uh, we will deliver according to that roadmap. All right. Now, um, let's just understand that while this is a massive order coming in, what this takes your overall order book position to, because while railways, despite the fact that it's a 30% CAGR over FY22 to 25, it doesn't contribute significantly to the total revenue pie. So just walk us through where we can see the overall order book on the back of this major win. Well, of course, the order book climbs terrifically for Siemens in India on the back of this uh, win. And this order, as I said, will be delivered over a period of 11 years. And those numbers will fall into the revenue numbers of uh, Siemens in India. This does project us, of course, into a completely different level overall in the business here in India. Yes, indeed. And the mobility segment, which um, is about 8% of the FY22 revenue, it's poised to see a very strong growth going forward. Can you just walk us through what kind of potential you're seeing for the mobility business? Because analysts as well are talking about mobility business set to, uh, setting to double on the back of this strong pipeline of locomotive orders, as well as other orders in the pipeline. So what else can we expect in the mobility segment? Well, absolutely. I think the, the plans of the Indian Railways are very clear, and this time the difference is they are implementing on those plans. Um, the entire tendering process has been open, very transparent, and very quick in conversion from the time the first uh, inquiries went out till the time the bidding has been done, and finally the announcement of the, of the successful winners. So we are seeing a major shift um, in, the, in the behavior of the Indian Railways over the last two years. And that has given Siemens a huge amount of confidence in the tremendous opportunities that this country has in the area of mobility. Traditionally, as you know, Siemens has been very, very active in the electrification and signaling business uh, in, the, in the mobility sphere. But we haven't been so active in the rolling stock area. And with this, uh, announcement this announced uh, really brings in uh, our entry into the rolling stock. We've reopened our factory in Aurangabad for bogies. We are now here present in locomotives and there will be more areas to come. So mobility of course will be the focus area for Siemens in India in the years to come. But riding on the back of the plans of Indian Railways which we are now convinced will actually materialize. Um, it is being driven very, very clearly with a clear vision, a clear overview of what the railways wants to do, something that we have missed in the past, but now they have outlined their vision for the next years. They are converting on that vision year by year. We are seeing tenders coming out. We are, we are seeing that they are being done in an open, transparent, and quick manner, efficient manner. We see the direction of the Indian Railways towards electrification very clearly. It had started quite some time ago on electrification, but it is now moving forward. We are seeing the shift towards the Kavach system on the signaling side, and we are now seeing very, very clear 
um, a shift in terms of increasing the efficiency on the rolling stock side. And Siemens will be a part of that um, process to, to modernize and make the Indian railways much more efficient. We'll modernize and make Indian railways a lot more efficient. Well, that sounds fairly promising. Um, now, Mr. Mathur, I also understand that you're vying for opportunities for the Vande Bharat train set orders worth about uh, one lakh crore uh, via the address. And, um, you know, walk us through um, what the update is on that front because it is a highly competitive tender, I understand. There are several participants and what kind of market share it could bring for Siemens. Well, I don't want to talk about tenders which are in the pipeline at this point in time, but um, I think it is, it is fair to say that the entire process, as I said earlier, of um, making the, the, both the freight system as well as the passenger uh, transportation systems much more efficient is a very clear focus of the government and of the ministry. And um, we will be a part of that process, and we are a part of that process as well. And we will be bidding for all the tenders that, that uh, come out on those lines. All right, so we expect to interact with you then a whole lot more as well, Mr. Mathur. Now, um, walk us through what the outlook is in terms of um, you know, revenue growth potential. I'm not asking numbers or projections, but I just understand that the, lie, the high dependence on international supply chain has been a bit of a concern for the company. So will that interfere with your revenue growth projections down the line? So I think uh, the important factor is India's growth story is intact. Um, the GDP growth is, is very clear. Um, the focus on uh, capex in infrastructure continues. Uh, it has been consistent of the government. That has in turn created a whole lot of confidence in private industry to move towards expansion in their areas. The focus of the government on renewables and everything linked to that with e-vehicles, with um, energy side, um, has also been very clear. The focus of the government with the PLI scheme on semiconductors, um, on batteries, etc. And these are areas where Siemens is present in, um, both in our technologies as well as in the software offerings that we have. Um, so I think our growth story will be intact. In fact, will accompany the growth story of the country um, as we move forward. Um, I do believe the government has managed the, the global crisis extremely well, both on the side of inflation as well as on the side of managing interest rates. Um, of course, there are challenges on the supply chain with, uh, with the semiconductor issues, and there have been um, impacts of that also on our revenues here. But I do see uh, an easing of that coming up in the year ahead. It will not disappear completely, but uh, it is getting much better month to month. So I think overall the growth story of Siemens in India is intact. Our revenues will continue to come. Our order backlogs are at an all-time high. We are entering new areas of business, like in the mobility area, um, et cetera. So we've done an acquisition of CNS, as you are aware. Um, so we are looking at both organic and inorganic growth. And um, the growth story of India is intact, and Siemens' growth story will accompany that. OK, fair enough. Um you know, but I just wanted to understand, given that you said that you are seeing an easing of supply chain concerns on a month-on-month -month basis, um, that in keeping that in mind, but also the fact that there have been higher logistics costs, etc., um, what would that do to your overall margin picture? So I think we've got to be cautious here. I will not give a guidance on our mi margins at this point in time. But we've got to be cautious over here, particularly in, time, in, in the context of how the global scenario pans out. Um, we are not completely insulated from what is happening and isolated from what is happening globally. Um, so I need to put in a word of caution over there and see how logistics pans out and how the, the supply chain actually moves um, in the months ahead. Uh, margins, of course, we have a very high localization content here in the country. 
uh, we continue to localize substantially in every area of our businesses um, under the Make in India uh, vision of the Honorable Prime Minister. And I think um, that, that will ensure that our margins continue to be robust and continue to increase. All right, margins will be robust and continue to increase. Now, I just want to bring up with you a few pointers and, you know, some concerns maybe that the market has um, regarding Siemens. The uh, import dependence from the parent, which is about 30% of your sales, uh, the business reject that we've seen, as well as m &A being influenced by the parent strategy. How would you like to, you know, assuage these concerns? Well, I think all of these have actually helped Siemens' growth story in the country. I mean, the M&As that we have done have not impacted the growth story of Siemens in the countries. We have, we have taken out businesses where we believe uh, that they cannot really contribute here substantially, uh, but linked also to the fact that many of these M&As have been done based on uh, decisions that have been taken at a global level to take out these businesses at a global level and focus really on what Siemens is strong in and where we believe the growth story of Siemens globally is and therefore here in the country is. Um, so I think the growth story of Siemens in India has not been impacted um, by any of the M&As. We are coupled very closely to the strategies of the parent company. We benefit hugely from the technologies that we get from the global company. We benefit hugely from the global strategies uh, that the global organization has. India is a part of that uh, strategy. Indeed, I must say an important part of the global strategies of, uh, of Siemens. And I think we are, we are in a good place to ensure that the growth strategies that we have lined up and that we have in place remain intact. Um also, I understand that the automotive industry has still not bounced back to those pre-COVID levels. There has been an increase in volume as we've seen demand grow, but CapEx is a little bit subdued. Would you concur? I think um, automotive, there are pockets that have increased um, very well. There are others that are slower. Um, are we back to where we should be? Probably not, but the movement is definitely in a positive direction. Uh, we are not back to the high levels that we used to be, but there are some parts that are doing extremely well in the automotive and others that are not. But I think um, looking at it in totality, not only the automotive, but you've got businesses like Pharma that are doing extremely well. There are businesses like, um, like um, food and beverages that are also picking up, and there is substantial um, expansion in capacities in the private sector that are happening, not least because of the government's focus on um, CapEx and infrastructure, but also because of the new areas and the incentives that the government has put under the PLI scheme. Yes, indeed, there has been a lot of focus. What about, um, you know, the energy segment? Because the order backlog, ha backlog has grown about 22% in FY22. Given the fact that, you know, there is increased demand that we're seeing for industrial decarbonization solutions like waste heat, biomass, etc., what kind of growth potential do you see for Siemens? Well, I mean, the, the, uh, the shift towards renewable energy is, of course, a huge um, benefit there for the country, and it is a step in absolutely the right direction. Um, energy efficiency, it's not only the supply side management, but it's also the demand side management, where energy efficiency is becoming increasingly more critical. Um, this is an area where Siemens has a huge amount to contribute. Um, as more and more goes into, into the grid in terms of renewable energy, the grid needs to be stabilized, and this is where Siemens does have technologies to stabilize the grid. It does have technologies also to make the entire distribution systems much more efficient, um, and we do see areas of potential over there as well. And. Um Walk us through what the outlook is when it comes to the budget, because the impetus on infrastructure spend, that uh, is expected to translate into strong capex in the country, 
There's also been a lot of focus on smart and green infrastructure, decarbonization. What is it that you're expecting from the budget on these two parameters? I think um, everything that you that you mentioned, um, a continued push on um, capex and infrastructure. I do believe that will be a focus area in the budget. I do believe there will be a continue a continued focus on renewables and green. Uh, hydrogen will be a, a, a focus area as well. Um, and I do believe the budget will be a growth budget and a continued growth budget, very consistent with the messages that the government has given in the previous budgets as well. So I am looking forward to a consistent budget, a growth budget, and a budget that will, will also encourage consumption as well. Yes, one can only hope. And we've also seen in the past the budget allocation to railways has been fa quite strong for the two, past two consecutive years. Um, how are you looking at uh, you know, that really um, panning out and shaping up in the upcoming budget? Well, I do believe the railways will play a, continue, a, a major role in the budget as well. Um, the railways has been doing tremendous work in the last two years, very clear focus, very clear direction, but they will need continued CapEx um, allocations there. And I believe that in order to continue with the plans that the railways has in store and the direction and the vision that they have laid out, um, that the budget will support this. Um, in every sense of the term. So I am expecting uh, continued high outlays for the railways in the upcoming budget as well.